Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of having to settle for mediocre are over. Welcome to Project Relationship. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. Join me as I explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton. That's me. And I'm here with my partner. Not a doctor. Ken Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not a doctor. And if we get one more Christmas card oh my that God. comes to Mr. and Mrs. Hamilton instead of Mr. and Dr. or Dr. and Miss or I don't know, something else. <laughs> yep. That's just, that's it. I draw the line. That was a lot of school to go through. No, you're a, you're a doctor. Okay. Well, anyways, <laughs> we are talking this whole first season about... Well, the chapters in Project Relationship, the book, um, we're, walk we're working through them. So this is number five. But we're talking about the chapters and how our relationships can be better, how we can be better in our relationships, how we can get more out of them, them and put more of ourselves into them in relation to holidays, oh, holidays and the stress of the holidays. And chapter five is, for me, a, a really helpful chapter. It was a helpful chapter to write. I felt like it let me codify things that we had talked about for years and I wrote it down and we made the uh, exercise actually together. We made the, the um, you can actually get a relevant exercise um, free on my website um, out of chapter five. It's called the Role Clarity Toolkit and we created that together out of the conversations that we had because I was writing this chapter. It was really interesting to see the 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 patterns and the threads and the core of what it is that we do in this area right and you got and try it all to, written down try to write it down and yep. make it succinct so that um we could act on it we could act the way we meant to in our relationship right yeah so um anyways we'll come back to that but we're gonna start by talking about what it what we even mean when we say relationship resilience for me when i say resilience i mean that we can handle whatever life throws at us which for you and I, well, okay, I, I warned you about this when you first, um, when we were first together, I think one of the first things I said to you is, oh yeah, my life blows up like every few months and everything feels like we just tossed all the cards in the air. And that happens at the holidays too. And it happens, it just happens. And Random intervals. And yeah, and that's not how your life had gone. It is not how it had gone. <laughs> um, and so what I didn't hear you saying, it didn't understand about what you're saying is, yeah, and that means that the our relationship has to be resilient, flexible, agile, it has to be able to work yeah. through and, and maintain through a lot of surprises. It's dynamic. It's dynamic. <laughs> and we don't have um, a, a straightforward level relationship we have a very reliable and consistent, consistent isn't the right word. It's strong. It's but reliable, it's but strong. it changes a lot day to day. It's hour strong to its, hour. due to its flexibility. Yeah. So for instance, um, during our relationship, we've experienced the death of three, my all three of my family of origin members. We've gone through the opening of a, a business that we loved and hated at alternating paces, yeah. um, then closing, deciding to close that business, going to grad school, getting married, getting we, each of us getting divorced, finally getting married to each other, um, trying to celebrate holidays through all of this diagnosed mess. With the I don't disease. even. Oh, diagnosed! Just, oh my gosh! <laughs> right, you were diagnosed with MS. Yeah. Um, just, during this, I forget that that's that happened during yeah. um, multiple illnesses from all of my family yep. members, um, many of them, and including people needing to move into our house and and live with us. And we live, you know, in, in a 1600 square foot house with seven kids was with, so yep. having another person come to live with us was and not was, inconsequential. It's been a lot. There was a pandemic in there somewhere. Oh, oh, wait, a, oh wait, that's, that's now. now. Wait. Yeah. And I went to grad school. First I went, well, I got a bachelor's degree, then a master's degree, then a PhD. Yeah. And, and I've run another couple businesses because I like starting businesses. 
Um, it's one of the things that I like to do with myself is create something from you nothing. You like creating things. But it is not slow. Yeah. But I mean, in order... the way we are strong, yeah. it's funny how we've been, we've been recording this and I haven't touched you or held your hand, but I'm holding your hand right, now. Right I'm like, now. oh my gosh. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's real. And there are, there's, there's a lot of ways that uh, somebody could approach the amount of disruption and change that that we've experienced and one of them is to hole up and close up as as an individual and i think that's kind of that's the way my life had gone generally before i started my relationship with yeah, you describe that more what did it feel like like at the holidays then yeah when it so was stressful what it did was it feel like? uh i know people talk a lot about you know the holidays being a lonely time and yeah uh, very much if you if you're since my response to stress was to kind of close up into myself is it it a lonely time there were all these things i wanted and i wanted connection and i wanted the feeling of community but the stress caused me to retract into myself and to close off my connection to that community so another to... way to put that is you had an avoidant attachment yeah, right. yep. uh, move that yep. you made um i don't think of attachment as like a, a cut and cut and dry like here you're you're you have this pattern and that's all but it seemed well, like one that of my was strongest your move. strategies was to avoid and to yeah pull away and mine is is a much more anxious attachment so mine is to to move into yeah and it was very different for yeah. us yeah it was. i remember those early holidays i remember the holidays before we were an us when we were friends and i would watch you um yeah. a little bit in the distance and think how how together your life looked compared to mine. Cause I was always, I was always, you know, just always doing something new or having another baby or doing like, just, just constantly having a baby every two and a half years. And your life looked much more ordered and neat. And yet when I picture you from that time, so say 12 years ago or 15 years ago or 20 years ago, we've known each other our whole lives. Um, Ken was my eldest cousin's closest friend when we were growing up and my cousin lived next door. So known him my so whole there life. There you were. Um, when I remember you from that time, I remember it's just a, a still image of you in your kilt. Um, and there's no smile on your face. There's not really a frown either. Well, no. It's just I this like iron yeah. texture to you. And it's funny that you say it's a still image because what I was thinking before you said that is that what I do in those moments, what I would do is I would stand as still as I could mm. metaphorically and physically. I would just like go to a party and just stand there mostly and because that was how I responded to it. That was how I got through because my relationship um, to to everybody felt rocky and questionable because everybody's in, in so many people that I interacted with their response in times like that was to just pretend yeah, to pretend everything was great and everything was fine. And I, I was, I just had enough of a glimmer of emotional awareness to know that that wasn't true. And it honestly, it confused me. And so I would stand still. And then I met you. And we started to have and you, know, my, met you and my general move too, and learning about. I mean, and I had seen you through all of those holidays too, and you never stood still. You I were have always, a tendency to exuberance. You would make <laughs> things happen. You would make things change, and in the face of pretension, you have a tendency oh. to um, uh, poke reveal. The bear? <laughs> yeah, to, to reveal to, the disillusioner. That's yeah. what I've been called before. And so I do tend to flip over a lot of rocks so, yeah, and not I, leave things alone. Yep, you, you flip over rocks. And then I, I started a, an intimate relationship with you and discovered that it wasn't possible to stand still anymore, not and be in a successful relationship with you. So that's an interesting phrase, a successful relationship. Mm -hmm. So we came together tried to make a life together and it was hard as Ooh, it was oh hard. it was so hard um it was so hard but one of the ways it feels like it was hard now as i look back and i think 
oh, we forgot to lean on one of both of our strengths, which is flexibility. Yeah. In fact, neither one of us is rigid. But in the lives we'd created before there was an us, we both relied on rigidity. Right. Yeah. To hold ourselves up. Yeah. I, I had a people knew me as a hard ass. I was difficult and I was I was strident and I yeah, I was demanding demanding and difficult. And that was because I, I felt like I was creating exactly the world that I needed. Yeah. Right. And there was no but in fact, I don't feel that way. I need no I like flexibility. I like moving with the world. And you're, um, but you the, had, you had a lot of <laughs> people thought of you as very rigid as well. Oh yeah. I mean, you were, um, yeah, not flexibility is not something I think would have been. No, but then they also thought that I was, uh, stingy and in fact, yeah, I'm you're generous, generous to a fault. Yeah, you're, you're a generous guy. Um, so, and in the face of the misunderstanding too, more, more reason to, to hold still, which just fostered the so rigidity fe- illusion. Right. So feeling misunderstood yeah. each of us individually. And then we came together and we had to reconcile the fact that we thought we knew who each other was. Well, yeah. Yeah. We'd and figure known out each what other that your meant. whole life right. and, and interacted I in so many person. different ways. Um, and I don't oh, know this wait person. a minute. You're not so, any of the things that everybody says you are or that I thought you were. So or... I want to get practical though. Yeah. What yeah. do we do? Because I mm. think we, we took a pretty um, spectacular turn when we moved from um, relying on that rigidity and thinking that if we just made a set of rules um, around everything, including the holidays. Yep. Like, how does this yeah. day need to go? How does the season need to go? All of it. I do like to have a plan, but that rigid <sighs> stance yeah. wasn't serving us. When we shifted to this attitude of connection building as the foundation, yeah. I feel like we were able to gain a lot of resilience. And it was the little connections it was the little, the little things that we've added over and over and over. Yep. Um, and in the book, I talk about that some. It's the all of the small connecting rituals throughout our day, and they've changed over the years as our circumstances yep. have changed. Those are the things that I think create created a life that feels safe to me. And I and safety is a big deal for my psyche. My psyche needs needs um, a lot of reinforcement and to remember that it's it's relatively safe to come out in love. So those little moments of connection. So I remember early it was it was like knowing that I would get a text from you um, around lunchtime when you were at work. Just that, just knowing that I would get a text from you, just a hi and a check in. Yeah, it's and, changed, but um, now you work eighteen inches outside my office door. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little different. I don't want the lunchtime text anymore. No? All right. But you bring me cappuccino every morning. And that matters. And then we sit together and just spend the time drinking our cappuccino, talking about whatever. Right. And that's that's important. So important. Now, then, we're blessed to be in the teenage phase, though, not oh, in the little kid phase. Because yeah, when we were in the little kid phase, we needed was, things like texting each other, possibly from the bathroom. Right, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like where, yeah. whatever. Because we couldn't we couldn't have created the same kind of rituals we can create now. We needed to be um, expeditious and, and creative in our rituals. Yep. And things have, you know, the holidays have changed so much because now the, the kids are all older. And uh, there's a whole bunch of things. There's a whole bunch of parts of the holidays that we don't have to do anymore. Right. Um, well, I mean, the youngest just made Thanksgiving. So, yeah, dinner. we just so we just celebrated our Thanksgiving, which we do not on on U.S. Thanksgiving proper, but on the Saturday, Saturday after. after. And we have a ritual that uh, in their 13th year, no, well, their 14th year, the year after they turn 13, Third, yeah. um, our kids are each responsible for making the whole Thanksgiving dinner. They have to plan it. They usually shop for it, but Mac um, couldn't shop for it this well, year because of the year. pandemic. Um, but plan it organize it, um, plan their time and then prep it and cook it and serve it. 
and uh, pose for a couple pictures for me because I, I just need that in my life. That's a big ritual for us that requires us to be resilient and dynamic and okay with letting go. Yeah. Because we, so as these kids have grown up, we have to let it change. Each yeah. of them has needed something different. Um, each of them has needed us to be different for them. And as every year has gone by, as, um, as we've, as the two of us have felt our way through the changes and let them be, we have, some things have settled out. We talk about as much as we can and are as explicit as we know how to be. And some things have settled out about um, who's taking care of what. The ah, yes. Role clarity. Role clarity. Role clarity. Okay, so I think role clarity is absolutely key. And role clarity sounds like it's just about dividing up the chores, right? Like who's in charge of what? So divide up your chores. But role clarity is bigger than that. Yeah. It's not just about a chore list, um, although it can be really helpful to get a chore list and a how do we run our household together. Or even if you keep two separate households, but you also overlap a lot, like the shared tasks yeah, the shared and the shared tasks. places. The so role clarity is about making a clear agreement, an explicit agreement yeah. about what I'm responsible for and what you're responsible for. But the difference between a chore list and a role clarity um, experience uh, is the emotional labor. Yes. Because we're talking about the holidays right now, and I can't think of a single physical task. I mean, you can complain about decorating or whatever, but physical tasks are not the weight nope. of the holidays. No, not, not to me. It's the emotional stuff. It's yeah. um, predicting, it's figuring out who needs what gifts and predicting what um, things will come up taking care of people's hurt feelings, managing the time of not just you and your family who live in your household, but whatever family feels like you should visit them. And now we're in a pandemic. So yeah. now there's dealing with the, the emotional fall, fallout of people of not, not visiting. <laughs> visiting or yeah. not sure whether they're all on the same page about whether to visit or not. Keeping and, track of what size these yeah, people are wearing. These, these children are growing up and, and they, yeah, or and who whatever. needs what or. And who likes what? Like knowing right. what's what's a good style thing for this kid versus that kid. Right. All of the things. There's so much to do. Dealing with the grief that the holidays brings up. I yeah. mean, you could be years and years from a loss, but the holidays can shake loose yeah. memories. Um, the smell of something particular, the, the sound of a particular carol, whatever, can shake something loose. Yep. I still have stuff coming up that? from 1984. Yeah. Your dad died when you were 17 yeah. and that's still i know every Resonates. year yeah. yeah nat king cole right that's gonna do it for you every yeah. year there's a and it jars something loose and we so who's responsible for that yeah, for who, that grief and, and it's all very it's simple like to say like well each person's responsible for it. that's not but the we're kind in of a connection relationship we want. and yeah that's it's more complicated than that and we so i'm not responsible for your feelings but I do feel responsible for being attuned to what's going on in the emotional worlds of all the people I share yeah, and it, my it, house with, my home with, and beyond my home, my, my family, my people, yeah. my closest friends, my, yeah, my people. I want to be attuned to and that. What, what are you committed to yourself? Because the responsibility sometimes can sound like, oh, this is your job, but um, if there are things that we might together say, well, you know, it's not about how, um, okay, this isn't coming out quite right. But when I think of what I'm responsible for, I might think of an obligation that somebody else put on me. Mm. But here I'm thinking about what I'm committing to. Yeah. What yeah. I'm saying out loud to be clear to you that, okay, I will take care of th these things. And then to ask you specifically, will you take care of picking out the gifts for these kids this year. And if I explicitly ask that question, the job for you becomes a much different job than if I'm just sitting there 
silently expecting you to do it. It's a very yeah. different experience for you. It is. And we that took us many years. Oh, yeah. It's a pretty simple one, still but it took not, us years. I'm still and not nailing are, that one. We are a what people like to refer to as a blended family. I, none of our kids like that term very much, but um, it meant that at the beginning, it wasn't quite clear. Who's yeah. buying right. presents for yeah. who and who's responsible for knowing that we're not overlapping our gifts or whatever. And yep. it turned out that the answer was pretty simple in our household. I like buying gifts and I'm good at it. And you're good so, at keeping everybody and I'm good at keeping in track mind of and, it. Yeah. So I do that. And once we established that, it wasn't so much the task that I think got easier. It's that I don't feel resentful. I know that you are asking me to do this. Yeah. And so the emotional labor that it is to draw out from the kids, because when they were little, you know, draw out their wants and then sift and sort and make sure that fit into our budget, figuring out how we could make something that they wanted happen if possible. Yeah. And if not, figuring out how we were going to manage the stress of feeling like we couldn't right. make their wants yep. happen and, and figure that out. And once I knew that that was actually, okay, this is mine to handle, I actually felt a lot calmer. I felt like I was given a gift in being given that responsibility in our house. Well, I don't know about other people, but I know that our relationship gets, it gets rockier the more confusion there is. Yeah, it's not so much how much work there is to do. Yeah, it's it's about how like, okay, so is, is he buying things? While I'm buying these things, are we gonna end up, what's, what's gonna not happen? a terribly skilled gift buyer it's gotten so That's much not better true. But... i get people stuff i want all the time <laughs> yeah. is that not how that's Wait, supposed that's not to go that goes. um so it's, all... you're so much better at it but it wasn't and it was really stressful uh, it was... and it caused fights yeah and that reminds me of how like how confident you were uh, you would buy no no i know what I yeah know. you would what buy gifts in the beginnings and great. yeah you looked no, it was with this crystal clarity yeah and you would buy them you would buy them late. You would buy, like, they wouldn't necessarily come on time. But you were so sure of yourself. And that is, that was I not cool. That was not yeah. cool. But it got in the way of us connecting, too. Like, we, yeah. because you weren't, you didn't want to talk about the fact that this was actually something really hard for you. Well, Your confidence was, yeah. it was getting part in of, the way. It was part of the pulling back to myself and saying, well, I just know what I'm doing and I don't need to talk to anybody about it. But at the same um, time, being confident about my skill at gift giving has really helped us. Right. Um, and part of that confidence comes from knowing not so much that I'm good at doing it, but knowing that I'm better at it than you. <laughs> <laughs> right. And allowing that to be true, allowing, yeah. that, allowing me to be curious about you and, and what you're doing and, well, and, and yeah. say, wow, you know what? I don't think that this works really well for you and let us have a connecting conversation that's that feels revealing yeah. because we have to own the fact that we're not good at every single thing. Yeah, it's it's revealing in the. I wanted to say something about shared vision because you talked a couple times about making things happen, and when we talk about the role clarity, part of what you have to talk about is what are you, what are you trying to do? Yeah, and just asking like who's who's going to be responsible for what? Okay, well you be responsible for. Uh, for lighting the advent candles. Wait, is that something we're doing? Wait, how, we, what? Wait, right, like, we didn't even have a vision oh, of- Oh, you didn't think we were, oh, no, I want that. And now you're into what is the vision of the the holiday? And then and then the, the curiosity of what are we doing? And that allows me, who has been, I think, more, I've had more troubles around the, the, confidence of I know what I'm doing because I wouldn't ask the questions yeah. to find out whether it was even what was desired. So we've learned that resilience requires us to not assume that we know mm -hmm. exactly what the other person thinking, but it's not just that. It's also not assuming that the the cultural template that we were handed as yeah. um, fairly privileged, white, cisgender, um, people in a heterosexual looking though very much not heterosexual marriage um it, there's a template um where we were raised christian 
you know, the, yeah. there's there there was a template that we could follow, and assuming that that was how we wanted the holidays to go meant that there was a lot of room for us to not get what we wanted because yeah. we were just following a pre-stamped pattern, and it was actually pre-stamped by two households yeah. separately, and then we tried to combine it, and the resilience came in setting all of that down and saying, what do we actually want? And the we is hard because I think first we have to get clear with ourselves. I had to spend yeah. a few miserable holidays crying. And this is just how I don't think everybody has to. Please do not spend miserable <laughs> holidays just for the heck of it. But I spent some miserable holidays um, crying, trying to reconcile the loss of my mother in particular um, 11, 10 years ago. Oh, my years goodness. This. What year is it? Um, so nine, nine years ago. Yeah, nine trying to reconcile that with having a holiday at all except here's the thing my mom didn't actually like the holidays they were stressful to her and it was hard so what was i doing i was just reliving a pattern and once i got clear on the fact that i could actually have whatever holiday i wanted we could cut pieces we could add pieces we could clip and reshape until it was what worked for us once i figured out what some of the clipping and cutting and reshaping needed to be for me and it's not that i'd never done that before but I had to do it again and we have to do it again this year. And you needed to do that too. Yep. And then we needed to come together and craft something. And then we needed to do it with co-parents who don't live in this house. You know, there, there we have exes who also have holiday needs. And who have a different level of resilience around the Th holidays and you know, they have theirs. all their own stuff. Right. And our children and figuring out what they need. And they're changing needs because now we have adult children with jobs and man, that changes things. fast so too. You gotta it's really the conversations it. that make the difference. I don't think yeah, anybody's totally. missing that. So that's yep. what makes the resilience different. But it's actually all the little, the little moves, yeah. the daily. little moves, the little daily, hourly, whatever, the little tiny moves of reconnection that we could count on. Yeah. Um. So the last five Christmases everything like it's just been constant change there's you know so many changes and yet the there are a few steady things like knowing that you and i are going to spend you know half an hour together in the morning knowing that i will handle the gifts and actually you don't need to think about it at all i don't want you to it's totally fine setting that down knowing that we we're going to draw a line around our family time. And it was just going to, these times, just little blocks right. around it and saying, yeah. this is ours. And then those little moments of when the house gets loud and we can see that someone's uncomfortable because some kids like the house to be quieter and yeah. some like it to be yeah. louder and knowing that we can turn to that child and reconnect to them, yeah. pull them aside. So if, yeah, those little right. moments all together have added up to be what we needed to be able to yeah, bounce resilience pull, pulls to mind for me this image of a of a ball that actually one of those balls that hits the wall and if you take a super um a super high resolution picture of yeah. it you can slow it down and see it goes splattens out against and the wall then and then oh it bounces back, back and it's fine right? it's a ball it's again. totally fine that's right. how hard life hits sometimes yeah but all the little connections have meant that we can come back together but we also have to balance that with not being too confident that we know exactly right. what's going on and how this is going to go well and that's i think that those Thank goodness those multiple moments of connection those planned as planned and incidental moments of connection throughout the day those are the opportunities to check in yeah and to and like verify our assumptions and our expectations and then be willing to change it and be willing to change and not to get oh my upset gosh. that it's changed. so okay like like going to bright nights Oh, and oh my god the bright night story we, yes. uh, we had a we got a van our van is large because we have a lot of children Holds 12 people Holds so 12 great people so we van. loaded all the kids in i'd made hot chocolate and hot vanilla for everybody everybody's got their cups and, and bright nights and is this going, thing at a, at a park in in springfield and it where just they just they create they light up great all over the place the, all over the park light and decoration you drive and through it it takes an hour and, and uh, stuff like yeah that. it's really it's, cool it's great and they were all excited we're playing so their like, favorite okay, christmas carols thing and, and we got um three miles like from three the house miles away and, and the van gets a flat 
And it's not an easy thing. This is to a huge van, right? And it's dark and it's cold. And it's a full Christmas story moment because now our youngest child is standing holding all the, the right. nuts from I'm like, all the lug nuts. Well, if we're going to change the tire, people should see how to change the okay, tire. Come so on, everybody. So he's showing them. And the thing is, so they, they're all standing there. It took like an hour to change it the tire. It took a long time. And then we realized we that did it. there was no way. So now we, we couldn't could go, get there We anymore. couldn't go there. We were going to miss the timing. So, and, and this was a thing. This was the thing we did. It was the only thing that we'd consistently done. And um, yeah, we just went for it anyways. Yeah. And but we didn't get to go to Bright Nights that, and we had the best time ever we did we turned around we drove back home they sang so loud yep. we wound up coming across these some houses, little thing some little had, whatever yeah. a couple houses that had some lights up and they all remember that as the best holiday memory they do yet and it didn't go to plan at all so we just rolled with it we rolled with it so i hope this holiday season you all find ways to roll with it and i know it's a pandemic so this isn't going to be easy but yeah, yeah we're just all going to get through Okay. Right. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. In episode five, Ken and I talked about what relationship resilience looks like in action. We shared stories about how we needed to come to terms with our actual wants around holiday stuff, as well as what our limitations and weaknesses are, so that we could be more effective and, well, bottom line, still like each other at the end of every day. We also talked about role clarity, not just for tasks, but also for emotional labor, and how heavy a task like gift giving or managing grief can feel if we wall ourselves off and take the work on as an obligation. It's little moments of reconnection that have helped us get through what can be the most delightful and stressful time of the year. Join us next time when we dive deeper into the ways that we can make connection a priority, even at the holidays, by leaning into our curiosity and getting creative with our connection strategies. Until then, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news. 